All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy. In the uh, in the wake of the Eagles getting torn a second anus by the Port Adelaide Football Club on uh, on Saturday night, I'm doing a video because uh, historically I uh, tend to chuck up the odd Eagles video when things are going really really poorly, and because the Eagles are a close topic to my heart, I feel like I can speak easily about it. And obviously, it's the topic I find interesting, but it also seems to bang views with you guys who seem to love uh, watching me talk about all the things going wrong in my football club. So. Here's another version of that, uh, and this video is kind of me coming to the realization that uh, the Eagles have hit rock bottom, and it's absolutely time for the rebuild. So let's look at where we currently sit. We are one and four, and second last, thanks to North Melbourne copping a beating from Geelong today. Been absolutely smashed two weeks in a row, uh, once by Sydney, uh, Friday night at home in front of uh, you know the national audience, got absolutely annihilated. And then the, the similar thing happened against Port Adelaide, where I truly, truly expected a better effort. I even believe we were going to win the game, and how ridiculous does that look now? And now we're a little bit removed from the, the you know the whole COVID situation at the start of the year. Um, there's still some injuries at play, but we have removed from that excuse part, and we've had two good looks at what this Eagles side looks like, and they're absolutely nowhere near it. In fact, it makes for pretty bleak reading if you go back a little bit further. I realised that we are 3-12 and 12 since the midpoint of last year. So pre by the Eagles looked somewhat resembling the team that had played fairly well in the previous couple of years. And then we fell apart in the second half of last year. And I was just hoping that uh, that was temporary. It would be fleeting and we'd be able to work through it. But 3-12 and 12 since the middle of last year means that we are the worst performed side in the competition over that stretch. So you're probably watching this video and thinking, why did it take you so long to accept where the Eagles are, Jesse? And th there's a couple of factors in that. Obviously, I think the COVID situation sort of delayed the reaction a little bit because in the first f four weeks, I, I know people got sick of hearing it, but it didn't make it any less true. We weren't getting a good read on where the Eagles are at because of the not only the changes each week, but the fact that we had to field players who are normally playing the waffle, not even AFL listed. That for me was enough excuse to say, hey, look, we just haven't learned anything about this club for the first month of the season. On top of that, we must have been the most injury hit side as well as when you include the uh, health and safety protocols on top of that. But deep down, I also I just believed with the list profile the Eagles have at the moment, the players who seem to be declining, I don't believe they should be declining yet. But I finally hit the wall with it. Uh, after seeing us getting smashed by Port Adelaide, it's time to accept that we can't really get too much worse for where we're at. And uh, even though we may have a few injuries to come back into the side, and Nat Nui and McGovern, I think, would have stemmed the bleeding heavily in the last two games. It doesn't really matter when the difference is probably just going from the worst team in the comp to, you know, close to mid-table, if that. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't that I was uh, naive or oblivious to the fact that we needed young talent in, you know, regardless of the fact that I thought we could play finals this year, I was strongly of the belief that we needed to get young talent in because of the decisions we've made over the last few years, recruiting Tim Kelly, trading out of the draft heavily, uh, we'd left ourselves in a position where we barely have any good young talent. So regardless of whether I thought we could mix it with the best this year, I, as an Eagles fan, I'm always going to have, you know, belief in the best scenario possible. We desperately need young talent to begin with. So from that sense, I haven't, I haven't learned that, but I certainly didn't expect us to hit rock bottom. And now it's time to pull this squad apart a little bit and it's time to just rebuild from the beginning. And it, it's sad to be saying that in round six, but here we are. The strange thing about the Eagles form this year is that uh, in similar to last year as well, we seem to get worse when the best players come back into the side. And I don't know if that's conditioning or if it's, you know, Simo's buzzword synergy at the moment. There's probably a fair few players who don't play regularly with each other, which would have to be a little bit of a factor, but you can't blame match conditioning uh, on, you know, the last two performances. We were annihilated from the opening bounce against Sydney and against Port Adelaide. It probably only took 20 minutes before our players were, you know, absolutely chasing us. Up until this point, you know, Simo has been criticized for playing those, you know, players rushing them back in from injury, trying to get their minutes in. It's a decision I kind of support, to be honest. I understand strategically why he's doing that, but we're where we sit currently, we are that far off it. It doesn't really matter even if we get a fit and firing Shuey, McGovern, Kelly, Yo, all playing their best footy this year. It, it doesn't matter. The season's ruined. Statistically, it is uh, it's really quite damning how far off the mark the Eagles are. They're ranked 18th in the league for inside 50s, averaging just 40 a game, which is really, really poor. And the 17th ranked side is six inside 50s a game better than us. On top of that as well, we're ranked 16th in the league from clearances. So really a lot of our issues are stemming from the midfield at the moment. So it's not only the ability to win the clearance, it's the ability to move the ball from the midfield into the forward line or even the back line to the forward line. 
I think the back line's held up very well in the circumstances, getting absolutely pummeled with opposition supply into their 50. And I think the forwards have done a fairly solid job of converting. What do we keep like 14 goals, three against Collingwood from way less inside 50s than them? They're more or less doing their job. So with or without the reinforcements, the, the problem area is the midfield. In my opinion, it's not a talent issue. And uh, maybe I'm a naive biased Eagles fan for thinking that, but I, I still think the players that we have in should be playing a lot better than they are. They should be winning more clearances. They should be getting the ball inside 50 more often. So if you if you take that logic and you, you think, okay, this best 22 is good enough to be, uh, you know, at least competitive with Port Adelaide, at least, you know, not getting annihilated by Sydney, then you have to look up and, and look at the coach and if, if he's not getting the best out of these players, is that ultimately his responsibility? I give him a bit of a slack for you know the circumstances this year, but uh, let's not pretend that this actually started happening midway through 2021. Last year, our game plan was exposed for being too slow. And I think the way we executed that game plan was poor as well. We looked very, very timid, whether that's a game plan issue or whether that's execution, I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think it's just a complete shit pile at the moment. I had this belief that uh, with a new stoppage uh, coach in, I think it's Jared Schofield is the stoppage coach and Matthew Knights is the midfield coach. I had a belief that that would sort of influence the way we move the ball a little bit and um, you know help us move the ball a bit more intentionally because I think that was what was really lacking last year. It was a decision to go sideways and, and not really anywhere near forward, which would explain the lack of inside 50s. But so far with the players we've had back in, I don't know if they're just falling back into their old ways I think the younger group actually displayed a bit more of an intentional ball movement. Whether or not these old players are coming in and they get under pressure and they're falling back into their old ways, I don't know, but the result is bitterly disappointing. So on Simpson, is he in danger? Well, my personal opinion is if you win a premiership with the team, you're the premiership coach of that club, I think you've earned the right to at least be there for the start of the rebuild. So I don't think he's in immediate danger, but for the reasons I just explained, there's something a little bit rotten there. I read a really good comment on Big Footy um, in amongst all the crap uh, that said that this person couldn't believe how many times Simpson has cited a lack of intensity and a lack of effort from this playing group over the last three to four years. For a physically mature and professional team, the amount of times that has been a problem for us over the last, let's call it three years. Admittedly in 2020, you know, we still finished fifth on the ladder, but in our worst losses, effort and intensity was absolutely a problem. It shouldn't be a problem as often as it is. I'm actually not calling for Simpson's head myself at all. I think he's got a bit more time. He's uh, financially with us until uh, I think the end of 2024. So in my opinion, he's got at least this year and next to, to prove that he's moving in the right direction. I personally like having a proven coach who's proven he can turn a team into a premiership team. And historically, we are a you know a loyal club. It took John Worsfold to, to walk out on us right before us sacking him when we were pretty much in a similar position towards the end of 2013 as well. So then the next question is, what do the Eagles do from here for the rest of the year? What's the focus? And the obvious answer is youth. But agonizingly, we don't really have that much youth to play. We haven't really drafted in the early rounds much over the last seven years. In fact, there's been three first round picks since 2014, Venables, Brander, and Campbell Chesser. Venables retired, Brander got delisted and moved to GWS, and Campbell Chess is out for this year uh, with that ankle injury. One of my favorite young players on the list, Luke Edwards, has had some really bad luck with injury too. Currently not available, although he did play Waffle last week. I'd be giving him pretty much every game this year to, to get into the side, but he just has bad luck with injury too. We have seen some positive signs this year. I think there's uh, been some really good signs that younger players such as uh, Xavier O'Neill, Naish, Jones, Hoff, and Dixon, I think they've proven that they've got something to add at AFL level. And while maybe they haven't really stood out as much, I think I've been glad to see some younger players, particularly the Talls in Harry Edwards and Bailey Williams get games because as Talls, they're probably going to need to hit 50 games before they're genuinely contributing as well. I think with the position we're in, push has come to shove a little bit and I think Simpson's going to be forced to favour a more youthful selection strategy going forward. But in reality, with our injury luck, and I don't want to sound what was me, every team has injury luck, but the way this season's trending the last couple of years, I can't really imagine us being able to put in a concrete youth strategy when we cop so many injuries as we currently seem to. I feel like our selection strategy this year is going to be forced by who's fit and who's available. As it happens, you know, we've been forced to play a lot of kids this year so far, which is good, but we're probably going to have to be a little bit reactionary considering, you know, how many players are still out. So for the rest of this year, I mean, ugh, gee, we're looking like a bottom two side and you could easily make the case we're the worst team in the competition based on the last two rounds. That being said, it's just a moment in time. I can see us jagging a few unlikely wins this year and I, I, and I do think in reality we're probably not quite as bad as we're playing right now, but it is hard to imagine, that being said, that we could really pull ourselves out of the bottom four. So we're looking at a pick between one and four. Part of me, and this sounds maybe sadistic or maybe it just sounds like I'm in denial, uh, but I think part of me is glad that the team and the, the way we're playing has fallen apart so badly 
because it's demanded action. It's going to be a painful year as an Eagles fan, uh, but getting a top five pick, I think long-term could be the best thing for us. What would be worse, in my opinion, would be have another 2021 year where we just sort of stabilize just outside the eight, nowhere near good enough to play finals, but ultimately still picking senior players in the hope of making finals or maybe being in a bit of denial about how far off we are. Now it's all laid bare, everyone can see the wounds, and it's time to rebuild. What are the likely list changes this year? Well, we've got the obvious retirements of Hearn and Kennedy, in my opinion. You know, I think Hearn probably could play on a little bit longer, but I, we as a club have to say it doesn't really work for our plan going forward if you keep playing. And then there's guys like Shuey and Redden who are out of contracts. And as, an, as a Shuey fan, I would hate to see him retire. But he strikes me as a player who would retire if he thought it was for the betterment of the club. So Nat is also out of contract, but in my opinion, the man can play for as long as he wants. We probably want to be taking five or six picks to the draft this year. So, you know, on top of Hearn and JK, we'll probably delist Winder, Jamison. All of these questions will be revealed closer to the end of the season. But that means there's probably a couple more players there you have to cut minimum uh, that you might not expect to make way on the list. It's time as an Eagles fan to to embrace this part of the journey, okay? As, as a fan of football, you can't just enjoy footy when your team is good because then, you know, a very small percentage of you will be enjoying football. Rebuilds can be fun in a sense. You have to put up with a lot of losing, a lot of doubt about, you know, whether young players are going to make the jump, but sometimes it just happens. And when you, as a fan, and I've done it once before, when you watch a team rebuild from nothing to being a great team, that is the most satisfying thing. So there's a genuine part of me that is kind of excited and intrigued to see how we go about this rebuild. Sadly, with the position we've put ourselves in with our list management strategies over the last few years, we have set ourselves up for a fairly lengthy rebuild, to be honest. I do believe that you can do it quicker these days, you know, with trades and free agencies, attracting young players home. That being said, it's more important that we get it right. I was thinking as I was watching Adelaide beat the Bulldogs yesterday, if in two to three years you try to sell where Adelaide is at, that's where I'd want West Coast to be at. A team that is rebuilding Plenty of youth on the list, but they're playing with heart. They're playing with intensity. Whether or not this Adelaide side will go on to be a great team, I have no idea. But I think as it stands at the moment, there's something to aspire to. And for the Eagles, we're you know paying the price for trying to win another premiership by trading in Tim Kelly and kind of ignoring the draft a little bit. We're absolutely paying the price for that. And uh, it's going to be a, a fairly lengthy rebuild, I'd imagine. But i got to say, it's been one hell of a ride. Not every fan of a rebuilding side can say, you know, well, at least we won a premiership and, and we can. And I, I'm just grateful for that. I'm not trying to rub it in. Simo's been a great coach. He won us that premiership. And for that, we'll always be, you know, grateful for that. I'm grateful to go for a great club like the Eagles who have proven, you know, multiple times that they can rebuild from nothing and become a force again. And I, I truly believe that we will do it again. That's it, guys. Let me know your comments uh, where you think the Eagles are at. Um, if you agree with me or you disagree with me, what list management move? would you potentially make i mean there's a lot of talk about trading darling and stuff but i like to keep things realistic it's just not going to happen but yep definitely comment below let me know your thoughts and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys